I just want to start this video by sharing this amazing news with you. We've stumbled across this reaction with um, between ethanoic acid and PCL5. And look, it's making CH3COCl. That's, that's what we want to make. You can tell by my voice, I'm just so excited by this, this reaction. So we've made the CH3COCl. We've made some POCl3 and some HCl. And look, look, the percentage yields 85.7%. That's amazing. It's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? What do you mean, or is it? I mean, what could be wrong with this? What could be wrong with an 85.7% percentage yield? That's brilliant, isn't it? So I'm using this reaction to introduce a concept called atom economy. So yes, it is great that this reaction has such a high percentage yield, but the problem with the reaction is it makes, as well as the substance that we want, this CH3COCl, it also makes POCl3 and HCl. Now, if we can't find a use for those products, they are classed as waste products and they need to be dealt with. So they need to be handled very carefully. They probably need treatment with other chemicals. That's going to incur costs. It's going to incur energy costs. So we're using valuable finite fossil fuels to um, fuel the process to treat the waste. And we probably need to buy in um, extra chemicals to treat the waste chemicals. So those extra chemicals need to be bought, they need to be made, there's energy going to be used to do that and you can see that suddenly this brilliant 85.7% isn't all that great after all. And so there's the formula to calculate atom economy. So atom economy is calculated by working out the MR of the desired product, so that's this CH3COCl, and we're going to divide that by the sum of the MRs of all the reactants. So basically we're going to add all the MRs together here and put them down there, and then multiply by 100 and express it as a percentage. And you can see there I've fed the numbers in to the formula, and we get a rather pathetic looking atom economy of 29.2%. So we started out with this amazing percentage yield of 85.7% and rather disappointingly we're coming out with a 29.2% atom economy. So chemical companies need to be constantly um, researching to see if there are alternative ways to um, produce the chemicals that they make and ultimately they want to uh, maximize the atom economy so that that's better for the environment it's more sustainable and if you think about the waste products if you can reduce the amount of waste products that's going to have a double bonus effect because um, you're not having to um, use up valuable resources to treat the waste products so that's better for the environment and obviously you're reducing your um, waste management costs if you're the owner of the company and so your profits are going to improve as well. So um, chemists are constantly researching alternative ways to make these, these products so it might be that a catalyst is possible for this reaction or, and, or the catalyst allows an alternative route with different reactants even, um, still making the same product of course, but um, the alternative route might have a much better atom economy and obviously that's what we want to achieve. I'll just finish with this one, um, this is slightly different because we've got some um, balancing numbers now to contend with, so we'll just see how we fare with this. So it's the reaction from the blast furnace and all I want you to do is calculate the percentage atom economy for the production of iron. So I'll just talk you through the calculation here. I've underlined the 
three and the two there because that's got to be brought into play in the calculation here. So remember, the way to calculate atom economy is the, it's the mass of the uh, the MR, sorry, of the desired product. So we want to make the iron, but because of the two in front in the equation, it's 55.8 times two, all over the sum of the MRs of all the reactants. But remember, there's a three in front of the carbon monoxide, so we have to factor that in there. And that comes out as an atom economy of 45.8%. So we'll finish the video by looking at atom economy and different types of reactions. So the first type of reaction I've got here are addition reactions. Now they would always have an atom economy of 100%. You don't even need to get the calculator out to work that out because you can see from these two reactants becoming one product, which is the case in all addition reactions, all of those atoms are in there. So there's no waste products, there's no other products to worry about. And of course, that's always going to be 100% atom economy. Second type of reaction we'll look at are substitution reactions. So they would always have an atom economy less than 100%. So I've chosen the chlorination of methane in the presence of UV to make chloromethane and HCl. So you can see that because we have more than one product, let's suppose that this was the substance we wanted to make, then obviously the HCl is a waste product, so the atom economy is less than 100%. And the final type of reaction we're looking at here are elimination reactions. Now they also have an atom economy which would be less than 100%. And so the example I've chosen is the elimination of water from ethanol. So we refer to that as the dehydration of ethanol. Um, and you can see there that the products are, notice I said products, are ethane and water. And so if we're just interested in the ethene, then this water is a byproduct, a waste product, and that's going to reduce the atom economy from 100%.